Okay, welcome to this week's uh, course of intelligence healthcare and its applications. So, um, so this week we will extend our deep learning approach to the chest X-ray image analysis. Okay, so let's uh, continue our scenario we introduced in, in the last week uh, uh, about the pathology. Remember that uh, in the last week's scenario, uh, we have a patient came to our clinic. Now, uh, this is a 62 years old male patient, and his chief complaint was cough with bloody content. So you try to uh, ask uh, about his past history, but none was significant, and but only uh, history you found is that he had smoking two packs per, e per day for 40 years. So you are, one, you are wondering that if this patient may have a lung disease that related to his chief complaint. So you, are, so you were ordering uh, a chest X-ray examination, and the result shows that it's, uh, there is maybe a little bit uh, just faint mass lesion in the right lower border of the, the lung. So based on these chest images, you want to confirm if this is indeed a mass. So based on the CT images, then you indeed found a mass lesion uh, attached to the pleura wall. So, so that was the common scenario in the hospital that when the patient came to clinics, then you you need to do something to verify your diagnosis and to find out the reason uh, behind the chief complaint. And uh, so the chest X-ray is indeed a very important uh, imaging tool that we use every day in the hospital. However, as I said, that the chest X-ray uh, is, is kind of, uh, although it's very basic, but it's, it is very challenging uh, to, uh, to, to, for example, it's very challenging for machine learning uh, tools to uh, achieve the performance like human doctors. Even just the simple plain chest image, is, it contains uh, several challenges that we still need to overcome today. Okay, so this is one of the early uh, pictures uh, about the X-ray apparatus development. So you can see there is a, a, a device here that, which is called the Crookies tube apparatus, and this picture was taken in the late uh, 18th centuries. And uh, the Crookies tube is visible uh, in this in this area, and uh, you can uh, this tube is uh, designed to generate X-ray beams. So the standing man here is viewing his hand with fluoroscope screen. So the X-ray beam will penetrate his hand and to illuminate the fluoroscope screen, so he can just visualize his hand and in real time. And in the meantime, the seated man is taking a radiograph of his hand by placing his hand on a photographic plate. So uh, at that time, the people uh, do not have any idea about the, um, any risk about the radiation. So there is no precaution against radiation in these pictures. But uh, at that time, the, nobody knows a hazard or about the x-ray. But it is really a, a big breakthrough of in the medicine because using this uh, simple device, then the doctors can uh, obtain the information inside our body without cutting into our body. And I want to talk about more about the, uh, the Crookies tube. So uh, the Crookies tube, uh, is kind of the vacant uh, tubes, and it only has a small amount of air uh, remained inside the tube, 
And when you apply the high voltage uh, to the tube, then you will generate a strong electric fields that can accelerate the small number of uh, charged ions and free electrons uh, in the gas and create a natural process of photo uh, ionization and radioactivity. So when the voltage is high enough, it will uh, emit uh, X-ray beams uh, from this tube. Now that is the one of the early experiments by the physics physicist then uh, to uh, discover the X-ray beams. So in the older time uh, in the hospital, when we uh, when the patient underwent the X-ray examination, then usually the machine is just like a, a, a camera. So the, the camera in the old times, there was a, a film, a photosensitive film, in inside the, the camera. So and there is also a, a X-ray radiation device that can uh, emit the X-ray beams uh, through the patient's body and it will just uh, uh, have some uh, shows the images on the photo plate. So um, in the older times we need to um, transfer or co copy that images from the photo plate uh, to a, a film then we need to read these films on the uh, light background box. So that is the old way uh, we read the x-ray images. So this can be done by like uh, uh, chest x-ray images, uh, skull images, uh, any part from uh, of our bone or our abdomen or any the other uh, applications. But with the computer that we can digitize these things. So basically we just transform the, the X-ray camera to the digital X-ray camera. So we, now we just need a digital uh, photo plate that can capture the uh, X-ray information uh, from the, its emitters. So with the computerization, then we can visualize the X-ray images on the computer screen without need to uh, to make a, a film. So that is a, a huge breakthrough because uh, it is in in radiology, in, it is one of the medical fields that adapts the computers and applies the uh, latest technology in the information to improve our medical practice. So, so this is uh, one of the common scenes in the hospital that how patient uh, took the x-ray examinations. So here you can see there is a x-ray uh, emitting device. So in this, from these uh, things, you can emit x-ray beams uh, to from here to here and so the patient need to stand here uh, be in front of the uh, photo plate. Then, then this is like a digital camera that so you can capture the information of the X-ray beams penetrating through the human body and so stored in a, a digital device. So uh, you, might want, you might be wondering that why patient need to stand in these positions, but not in the front position. One of the reasons is that usually in the standing positions, it is the better uh, position that we to prevent the, the other part of the uh, human body to receive the extra radiations. So when you are going to take chest X-ray images, uh, usually we will use take like. Uh, adopt these standing positions, and the X-ray beams will uh, be penet will be going from the back to the front. Uh, so this is we call the PA view, which is posterior anterior view 
of the chain of X chest X-ray images. So of course, uh, the technician need to tell patients to adopt the right positions, and the patients also need to cooperate with technician to uh, make a, a full inhalation to make sure that your lung is expanded during the respiration and need to hold your breath. So make sure your lung is expanded at the time when the picture was taken. So uh, once the technician uh, set up the patient's and the x-ray device, then he will go behind these walls and to operate the device. So you can see that in the modern hospitals, uh, we need to take a very careful precaution about the radiation because the radiation is a hazard. And uh, so you, you can see that this, not only these walls are protected by the, uh, the heavy uh, lead uh, uh, metals, but also the, the entire room was, is also protected by the lead uh, metals. So this is the, uh, the, the standard settings of the X-ray room. Oh, so the principles of the X-ray image is that X-ray, when the X-ray penetrates through uh, uh, certain things, it has a differential absorption of the X-ray uh, energies. So uh, the penetration of the X-ray beam is dependent on the tissue densities. On the right side, you can see a figure shows that uh, the effect of the absorption of X-ray when it's penetrating to the different types of the uh, tissues. So uh, the denser object here represents the less beam striking on the film, which means it has more absor absorption of X-ray. So the result of the denser object uh, on the film is the whiter images. And in the contrast, uh, when in the case of the less dense object, uh, then which means that you will uh, allow more X-ray beam striking on the film. So uh, the resulting images will be uh, more black. So this whiter and black just means that the, the degree of the absorption uh, def uh, by the underlying the tissue uh, characteristics. So for example, in this case, the air is, is very uh, loosely uh, distributed in, in this space. So in this case, the X-ray will almost uh, penetrate through this space without any obstructions. So the resulting images will be the, the most bl uh, black. And for the fat, it also allows uh, the more X-ray beams than the other tissues. So it will shows uh, faint gray colors and the waters will absorb more X-ray beams. So it will be the more uh, a gray, a darker gray. And, but the, <coughs> the bone, we have absorbed lots of the X-ray beams, so it becomes the white colors, okay? So the metal itself will uh, absorb almost all X-ray beams. So if you have a metal, uh, for example, if you wear a ring uh, on your hand and you just take uh, uh, pictures of your hand by X-ray device, then you will see a, a very bright, uh, the images of the ring on X-ray images. So this is uh, one of the glass test tube to tell you uh, the differential degree of absorption by the different tissue type. Another um, key points when you look at X-rays, the orientations. So in the medical fields that we, when we read X-ray images, the first thing we need to do is to check the orientation of the images. And uh, um, uh, usually we have a, a, a very interesting habit in the medical field that we read images from 
just just like the patient is in front of you. So when you look at these images, just imagine this patient is standing at in front of you. So so that's so now you can see he's the uh, face to face uh, with this person, and uh, so you can see that for these images, the right side is actually in the left side of these images and the left side is on the right side of these images and that's it because you just imagine your the patient is standing in front of you and you will be just just get an idea how we look into these chest surgery images so the so always remember that in a medical convention we just use the left as right and right as left and so the first thing you need to make sure which one is the left. Uh, so there are several uh, key points that you need to find out in X-ray images. The first thing is that for most X-ray devices, you will try to mark left and right on the film. And even in the digital images, they will also implement uh, information of left and right on the film for you. So the easiest way is try to look at the left and right mark. But however, if there is no this kind of mark, you need to look at the uh, the heart and the aorta. So here you can see uh, the white shadows in the central region of the body, and this contains the hilus and which contains the the several important vessels, including the aorta and the pulmonary veins and the aorta and the and, and also the veins from the lower part of the body and most importantly and our heart is located here and is toward our, our to our left side so for most uh, people our heart apex is is oriented toward our left side so we can look at the heart to make sure the direction of your uh, orient the chest ray x-ray orientations but just remember uh, there are rare cases of the uh, the inverse inversions of the uh, these heart orientations and uh, for that case you need to just look at the, the patient's history to make sure you doesn't uh, you just you have the right orientation of the, your uh, chest x-ray uh, presentations. Okay, so the second key point is to look at the aortic notch, uh, which is usually point to the left side of the X-rays. So if you look at this one, so this is left side, and this is the right side, and also you look at uh, the apex of the heart, and it, in most cases you will be on the left side of our lung, toward on the left side of the uh, our field and also the gastric bubbles. So the, the, the final key point here is that our stomach is located in our left side of the abdomen. So usually the stomach will contain airs. So in this case, you will see the floating airs in the stomach. And so when you see the stomach is here, then you can make sure, okay, this is mostly, in most case, this is on the left side here, okay. So this is how we uh, to read the orientation of the chest X-ray images. And uh, as I shown in the previous slides, that uh, in the most uh, cases, the patient will stand in front of the, the films and the X-ray source will uh, emit the X-ray from the posterior to the anterior. And so in this case, then you see that uh, there's a, one of the effect that uh, uh, of these different uh, orientation is that if the X-ray comes from the posterior to the anterior, then usually we'll have a, a normal uh, size of the heart, but if the patient is lying on the, on the bed and you have two 
to take the X-ray from the anterior to the posterior orientations, then you have uh, like a, a magnification magnification effect of this uh, X-ray source because when the X-ray source, the, the closer object to the X-ray source will be um, magnified on the film uh, because of the physical locations uh, between the X-ray source and the object. So this is one of the considerations you need to keep in mind and when reading the trace X-ray images. But in, although the interpretation of the trace X-ray images is uh, very challenging and you really need uh, a kind of the professional course to learn how to read X-ray images. But for today's, uh, the, the lectures, my purpose is to just show you how to read images in a very simple way and just, and how to understand what is the uh, important landmark you can see in X-ray images. For example, in the X-ray images, chest X-ray images, the most important thing we need to and look at is the lung. So here is the, we just uh, marked the border of the right lung and the border of the left lung. So, so because the X-ray images is the two dimensional uh, images, you really need to reconstruct the three dimensional anatomical structures uh, based on these two dimensional uh, images. So for example, in this case, actually uh, the, the, <coughs> uh, the heart is actually in front of the left lung, but you need to uh, try to picture yourself that this left lung has this kind of the border just behind the heart. And this is very important because if there was a pneumonia occurred in this region, then it is not only it is very hard to find, find these uh, pneumonia findings, but also actually there was some medical signs that help you to find out, to, to justify if there was pneumonia behind this region, just when this pneumonia just overlap with the heart regions. So, so that is tricky part because I, th I think that there was no machine learning tool that can learn every condition, every uh, conditions of the medical uh, problems. But uh, so, you, so that's why in, uh, I want to show you some basic interpretation of chest X-ray images so you can have a, a kind of the insights into the difficulties of developing machine learning in the medical images. So this is just tell you what is uh, the location of the right and left lung. And another uh, significant landmarks you can see on the tracery images is the bone. So here you can see the clavicle. Okay, so the clavicle is the uh, one of the important landmark uh, to help you determine the position of the patient. The patient, when the patient is in the standing positions, usually the clavicle is more flat. And um, but the patient, when the patient like uh, was take taken images, when he's lying on the bed, usually the clavicle will be more steep. So the angle of the clavicle will help you decide whether this is the standing positions or it is a supine positions. And the other is what I already talked about is the aortic arch, okay? And also the apex of the heart, and also there is a, a diaphragm here, and under the left diaphragm, it is the stomach and contains the floating airs. Okay, so another thing uh, is the bone. So not only the clavicle, you can see the ribs, and you can count the ribs from here to here. So this is the 10th, 9th, 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th, and 4th, 
and third and second ribs. And, and also you can see the ribs, the, sh the shadows uh, extend from here to here. So you might be wondering which is the front and which is the back, because uh, as I said in the previous slide, when you look at the chest X-ray images, you need to figure out the three-dimensional anatomical structures based on these two-dimensional images. So that is kind of a learning you need to uh, establish uh, for the human intelligence. Okay, so so indeed, our ribs actually uh, is is the extend from our spine and uh, take a curve to our front. So so this is the the back, and this is the front shadows. Okay, so so that's uh, how you try to. Uh, construct a three-dimensional uh, pictures in your brain that how these bone, bones uh, or so ribs just just imagine that this try to try to picture a three-dimensional uh, bones in your brain based on these uh, uh, explanations okay so uh, so uh, aside from the bones then Probably another important aspect of X-ray readings is the um, the the vessels and heart. So this is the borders of the heart and the great vessels. So the most prominent the landmark here is the aortic arch, and also the heart apex. So um, so I just want to show you the uh, one of the the common readings, the first thing you need to uh, justify the size of the heart. So why is that important? Because um, if you have the heart filler, imagine that, for example, our heart is like a pump, right? So the, the heart try to pump the blood um, through our body. And if the pumps uh, doesn't work, then, but the the blood still flows into the pump and it goes out of the the pump, which is the heart. So in that case, when the when the heart is not capable of the pumping sufficient uh, amount of the blood out of the heart, then then lots of the blood will uh, just remains inside the, the heart chambers, then we will tr increase, uh, gradually increase the size of the chambers because it's just being the congested inside the heart. So uh, in the case of the con so-called congestive heart failure, the heart size will be increased. So how to uh, justify the heart size here? Then we will, first we need to find the midline here and to calculate the distance between the right border of the heart to the midline as well as the left border which is the apex of the heart to the midline. Then we uh, sum up the distance of A and B and divide it by the width of the, our chest which is the C. And so, we, so in this way, we can calculate the cardiothoracic ratio, and usually will be under 0 0.5. Then if you found that this ratio is high, then uh, definitely, or in most cases, you, you will find a, a finding we call the cardiomegaly, which is, means that the heart is enlarged uh, in this case. Okay, so uh, again, when you look at the heart shadows, you also need to uh, reconstruct yourself in the brain, the anatomical orientation of the heart. So our, our heart has contains four chambers and also connected to uh, several important vessels. Uh, for example, here, uh, it contains the superior vena cava, which is the vein 
and transport the blood from the upper part of our body and also connect to the aortic altar, which is the, the main outlet of our heart, and also the pulmonary altar, which is the uh, outlet of the right ventricles uh, to our lung. So, so when you look at these shadows, you need to picture yourself that, okay, this is a right ventricle, because our heart is, is not in the direct uh, face, uh, just, I mean, that the heart is not positioned in, in the uh, direct way in our bodies. It just deviates toward our left side and, and, and lower side. So, so actually, it is right ventricle is in front of our, uh, the human the chest walls. And the left ventricle is in the posterior side, and uh, uh, likewise the uh, left atrium and the right atrium is on the right side. So you need to picture yourself the three-dimensional uh, structures in, based on these two D images. So this is maybe more clear than the previous slides that is just attach the. Uh, uh, anatomical uh, diagram on the real x-ray images. So you can see here this is right ventricle, and here is the left ventricle, and right atrium, and left atrium. So the prominent aortic arch is, is the uh, representation of the aortar, and also the left pulmonary artery uh, is here and also the pulmonary the vessels is here. So uh, behind these great vessels, you usually we will see the bronchi here. The bronchi is the major branches of our respir respiratory uh, systems. So the tracheal will divide into the bronchi and, uh, in the several branches connected to the several segments of the lung. So in the X-ray images, usually we'll see kind of the uh, the white shadows here. It is not abnormal. It is actually the normal representations of the bronchi and related vessels. OK, so uh, I'm not able to <coughs> just uh, illustrate every aspect of the abnormal findings in the x-ray you will see. But I want to show you some common findings that uh, you will, so you can have some flavor or some insights how these x-ray images can help doctors to, uh, to diagnose a certain disease. For example, here, the fluid accumulations. So imagine that our um, our chest wall or chest cavity uh, has two major organs. One is the lung. The other uh, is within, uh, I should say, that out, outside of the chest cavities is the mediastinum, and, uh, which contains the heart and other imp uh, vessels and other important organs. But uh, Although the heart itself is contains lots of the blood, so it will show the wider images on the X-ray. But usually in the lung, there should be only airs, and only some vessels uh, goes through from uh, each different segment of the lung. But there should be no fluid accumulate in the lung in the normal conditions. So when there is a fluid fluid accumulate in the lung. You, well, and also if the patient is in a standing positions, then you will see there is a fluid level accumulate in these coastal phrenic angles here. And in another case, if there is an abscess in the lung, uh, which means that in, if there is a, a cavity inside the lung that caused by uh, the bacterial infections and the, that 
space was uh, destroyed by the bacteria and caused the accumulation of the fluid, then you will see uh, there is a fluid uh, just uh, inside the lung field, uh, which is uh, showing the fluid level here. So when you see the fluid level in the lung field, that definitely represent abnormal conditions. So this is one of the example shows the blunting of the coastal phrenic angles here. So our lung, uh, let's go back to the previous slide here. So our lungs has a very clear borders in the coastal phrenic angles, which is the plural walls and uh, and the junction of the diaphragm here. So it is very clear and uh, angles here. But when there is a uh, fully accumulations, you will see a whiter uh, images, uh, shadows here around these coastal phrenic angles, and uh, means that there is a pleural effusions. Okay, so you can also see this in the lateral view of our chest uh, walls, uh, but usually we, you can see this in the in the PA view. Okay, another uh, emergent uh, condition is the free air. So you might want to wonder, okay, for the chest X-ray images, uh, the air is, of course, we will see air in the lung. But what if, if you see the air in the other part of the body? So in that case, uh, that would represent a normal condition, which we call the pneumoperitoneum. Um, so Remember that our stomach is in the left side under the left diaphragm. And usually there was uh, air in the stomach. So it is normal to see the floating air in the stomach regions. However, in some cases, if you have uh, like a gastric ulcer or maybe even a gastric cancer, and, but anyway, if it, uh, your gastric wall as the hole uh, just caused by any gastric conditions, then the air will leak into uh, the abdominal space. And so in a standing position, the air will float uh, just, just under the, the diaphragm walls here. So it's usually in our, our abdomen, there's no air in our abdominal abdomen space. Right, so in that case, you will see the the abnormal free air just floating under the diaphragm, and that is the pneumoperitoneum. So pneumo means the airs, and peritoneum means the uh, the walls of the abdomen. So this is one of the the free air you can see the, the pneumoperitoneum see on the chest X-ray. So you can see there is a a border of the diaphragm here, but under this border, there should be a white shadows, just like you see in the previous uh, uh, normal chest X-ray images. There is just a, sh um, a kind of the sh a white shadow. So here is the liver, and here is the stomach, because there is a free air in the stomach. So you can see there is a uh, air space here, but there should be no air seen in this part of the, our body. So when you see this kind of images, this is definitely not uh, normal. And so this is the, one of the case of the peri pneumoperitoneum. OK, so, so uh, another common diagnosis of the chest X-ray is pneumonia. So pneumonia is uh, a condition that lung has in, uh, the inflammations. So inflammation is a process that our body try to fight against uh, any uh, insulting uh, uh, substance or bacteria or virus. So uh, the inflammation will cause the increased uh, the blood flows and also increased effusion of the fluid into the tissues. So in the case of the pneumonia, because it is represent the inflammations, then you will see the whiter uh, uh, 
of the lungs because the, this part of lung has infections and it has contains more fluid than the other part of the lung, so it becomes whiter than the other parts of the lung. So these white patches represent inflammations and infiltrations. So that's that's how we diagnose pneumonia. So pneumonia is the result of inflammations, but so it can uh, so this this inflammation can result from many kind of the medical conditions. For example, uh, from the bacteria, from the virus like a coronavirus, COVID-19, or from other uh, etiologies. Um, so when you see the pneumonia, it doesn't mean that you have a certain uh, origins of the infections, and you need to find out why you have a pneumonia at this time. So for example, in the older people, when uh, the common case of pneumonia is the uh, so-called Aspiration pneumonia because the 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 older people might not be able to uh, to swallow the food uh, in a norm, uh, in a very uh, healthy way. So some of the food may just uh, goes into our trachea and cause the inflammations and infections. So uh, so. There are many causes of pneumonia, but when you see the pneumonia, usually we will see the white patches, the opacities on, on, in the lung field. Okay, so that's so that's why the X-ray images, uh, uh, the mo probably the most popular approach is to diagnose pneumonia, especially in this uh, time period because COVID-19 uh, will cause the severe pneumonia then. When we see a pneumonia, then we need to uh, try to uh, find out the reason. And the COVID-19 is one of the important uh, pathogen to cause pneumonia at this time. However, the pneumonia is only one of the abnormal findings uh, in the chest X-ray images. And there are other findings, uh, common findings, including the atelectasis uh, on for example, the, there is a, a part of lung just collapsed into the, uh, the just the solid space. Then there's no function here, so you will see the uh, the opacity in around these regions. And of course, the cardiomegaly in the congestive heart failure is also a common condition. Uh, you can see in the chest X-ray. And also the effusions, so you can see, just like I said, you will have the accumulation of fluid, and because of, of the gravity, it will accumulate in these uh, lower angles, which called the coastal phrenic angles of the lung field, and and this this common location we see the effusions, and also for the infu case of infiltration, means that when there's a, um, uh, for some cases, uh, the fluid might uh, just accum just leak into uh, outside of the cell bodies into the tissues. Then you will see the in increased uh, waters in these uh, lung tissues, and you, so it becomes whiter. It's very similar to the pneumonia, but so it, it's like a transition. When the infection is severe and the inflammation is very high, then you will see the pneumonias. But in the initial phase, you will see the infiltrations. And also, you you will see if there is a lung cancer in a uh, happened, you will see a mass shadows uh, around uh, in the lung field. And also in the nodules, for example, the tuberculosis, bacteria infections, will form a nodules and fibrosis tissues around this tuberculosis infection site. So uh, you will see uh, also the white patch here. In this case of pneumonia, it is especially difficult to diagnose in this case because, uh, as I said, in the right lung field is, is almost, you can see the entire border of the left lung, but the right not a left left lung 
is uh, overlapped with the your the left heart. So, <coughs> so when the pneumonia occurred in these regions, it's especially difficult to diagnose. You need to see, uh, you need to identify the abnormal uh, uh, textures in the these uh, uh, heart. Uh, sh borders and shadows to make a diagnosis of pneumonia in these regions. And also the case of the pneumothorax, which is uh, in this case, uh, there is a, a, a penetration of the pleural walls into the uh, lung cavities. So our lung is like just like a balloon. If just, uh, if you penetrate your balloon, just, just explode in just quick, quickly so so likewise if if uh, have a just a penetration in in a, one of the lung fields lung then you will just uh, collapse and you makes a, a result in a rapid expan expansion of the lung in the other side and make and deviate the tracheal so the pneumothorax is the emergent conditions, and it needs to be identified in the real time and very quickly. So you need to save the patient's life. So, so, so you now you you see the eight common chest X-ray findings here. So you can see that although is it may be a, a typical to see some abnormality in each case. However, imagine that in the real hospital uh, cases, you will see lots of lots of different findings. Then that's why it is, it is very challenging to learn how to interpret a chest X-ray. And, so, and also, it is why uh, it's very important to develop a machine learning algorithms to identify these different uh, chest X-ray of normal findings. So for example here, how do you differentiate the mass from nodules? And also how do you differentiate the infiltration from the pneumonia? And how do you identify the effusion, cardiomegaly, and atelectasis, and also the pneumothorax? So, so so that's why it's very challenging. You cannot use the rule-based algorithms to do these kind of the things. You, you, but even for the deep learning, it's still very difficult to do because for the deep learning, it's not, it, it's not like just try to differentiate cat and dog. It is, it is, you need to, uh, in a, in some cases, you need to combine several uh, know-how to make a diagnosis. So that is uh, the challenging part of the chest X-ray uh, task. Okay, so for example here, uh, this is the one of the results I cite from the paper here. that shows that even in these eight common diagnoses, there are a significant overlap between diagnosis. For example, in the case of the infiltration, it has a high overlap with the effusion and atelectasis and the other conditions. Um, also, like for example, the mass will also cause the infiltrations and also the pneumoth pneumonias, okay. So, for for example, the, in the case of the mass, uh, only less than fifty percent of the case has only the mass findings. Uh, in other case, it will also combine with the infiltrations, combine with the effusions, and also combines with atelectasis. So that's why uh, it is very challenging to uh, make a diagnosis. In a chest X-ray, you need to really need a very good label to uh, to teach the machine how to identify these problems. So, in this first part of the course, I uh, try to show you uh, the basic knowledge of the X-ray and how 
and its application to the chest uh, uh, field. And so based on this uh, interpre uh, simple interpretation of the chest array image course, then you probably have some basic idea how the difficulty of machine learning in uh, X-ray images. But I need to emphasize that uh, the artificial intelligence uh, is really rapidly progressing in, uh, in these fields because uh, the radiology is one of the, uh, the medical field that can adopt these digital technologies. For example, even before the era of the uh, deep learning, the radiology already adopt uh, a sophisticated uh, speech recognition techniques. So why is that? Because uh, in the older time, the radiologist uh, will need to uh, read the X-ray in their reporting room. So at that time, uh, there was no uh, computers, and uh, and the radiologists need to to write down their findings by by the typing. But you can imagine that they are very busy and they have no time to just type their findings at the same time uh, when reading the images. So usually they will use the tape to record the abnormal findings when reading the images and they will have the secretaries to help them to type their, uh, their uh, report from these speech uh, recordings. So in the later time, they can use a computer. They still use computer to record these uh, readings, but they also use the uh, speech recognition techniques to, to translate the speech to the text. So this is, uh, so this is why the radiology is really one of the advanced medical fields adopting the digital technologies. So in the later time, they also uh, develop uh, like uh, decision making and uh, also the deep learning techniques and in, in various applications. And it is also relatively easy to implement in AI in the radiology clinical workflow because the radiology already adopt the digital uh, films in when taking the, these images. So it is very easy to implement in AI to process these digital images uh, to, to help doctors to, uh, to make a more precise uh, the, the decisions. So uh, I hope this lecture part will already give you insights into uh, how machine learning or artificial intelligence can help radiologists to uh, diagnose a condition. I want to emphasize, also mention that uh, although there is a trend of the machine learning in radiology, but doesn't mean that the radiology radiologist will be replaced by the computers because so far we still need humans to make the final uh, justifications. So, so there's no worry that the radiologist will will uh, lose their job because we still the computer is help to help us to make a more precise decision, but not to replace our job. I think that is uh, the critical point at this in the medical field. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this lecture part and. Uh, we will move on to the workshop uh, in the next uh, part of this course. See you later.